Turn it up. From the YBA Phoenix Fitness 24-7 basketball facility in Rockland, California, it's Coach's Rise time with Coach C. Collins. It is start. Three, two, one. Coach's Rise time. Yep, I'm your host, Coach C. Collins. Welcome to Coach's Rise time. Whether you're checking me out on YouTube or you listen on the audio side, I'm just here to give you some good commentary when it comes to basketball. Um, just give you my perspective on a couple of things, have a little bit of commentary. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, if you've been here recurrently, I appreciate you. Thanks for following. And if you're new here, thanks for checking me out. Go ahead, hit that subscribe, that like button. Uh, leave comments too. Let me know how I'm doing. Uh, grow, grow, help me grow the algorithm, right? Uh, we appreciate it. Like my poor man at the Poor Man's Podcast says, do the HBO special, help a brother out. I think right now I'm at like 180 subscribers. If you can get me to 200, 250, be really appreciated. Small goal, but it's my goal. So uh, today's topic, just want to get straight into it. Um, I've been noticing a trend in, you know, basketball and referees getting attacked. Um, I definitely want to show you, I'm going to show you guys a, Quick little glance, quick little video for you guys who are checking it out on YouTube. For the people who are listening, uh, I'm going to play a little bit of the clip for the audio side of you for this for this news article. It happened in Vegas. Articles from uh, three days ago. And I'm, and me coaching and being on this AU side, I'm noticing a lot of attacks and a lot of, you know, people just quite honestly getting fucked up. And uh, it's got to stop. You know, it's just getting ridiculous. And these are human beings, too. And I'm also going to talk on the flip side of it because I do know and will acknowledge there are officials out there that um, uh, don't seem to care about their job, don't seem to care about the well-being of the kids, and sometimes treat it like it's just a cash grab rather than an actual job that they need to take with pride. So I will talk on both sides of that, but let's get let's do the article real quick. Please, uh, you know, hear, hear how crazy this is. Youth Rec League basketball game in Las Vegas. A referee had to spend several days in the hospital because of his injuries. Fox 5's Drew Andre joins us now to tell us about it. Drew. Well, John, in pretty serious injuries, a brain bleed, a concussion, five teeth fractured, a complete tear of his ankle. These are just a few of those injuries to Perry Woodward after witnesses described that he was sucker punched by a coach and that coach's son. And he wasn't even the one that officiated the game. I show up to do my two-game set, and I'm working with a familiar coach. I figured, worst case, there'll be slight confrontation, but nothing serious. And it was everything but. After a high school basketball rec league game at... Okay, I got to stop it right there. This is rec league. Just so you have this clear. This is rec league. Not a AU tournament. Not a state high school game. Not something that's going to get you a college scholarship where there's a lot of money and things involved. As far as I know, most high school rec, uh, most rec leagues generally don't cost that much. Pretty cheap overall, actually. Um, I think Hardwood Palace, I think their youth rec league is like 85 bucks, maybe 100, 150 at the most, even for high school. And you usually get one practice a week and one game a week. Like for ours, it's on a Friday. Uh, you heard all the injuries this may have suffered over a high school rec game. And from the other official that was talking in the news article, um, it, he was more mad at him than he was the actual official that got attacked. And as you can see for sure on the YouTube, because, you know, I have the click and uh, the, the clip and the link will be in the description as well. You can see the injuries this man suffered like, who raised you? Some of you people like you heard it was a coach and his son. The son is obviously taking the impression from the dad, but where did the dad come from? I mean, real talk. Sometimes I look at this AU background in the basketball world. And I'm like, who raised you? Where, like where in this world does this make sense? So that's just my first take on this, that, a rec basketball game went down like this. But let's go further. Let's see what's up. Little community center, the chirping from a coach continued towards the game referee, Sean Rowe, and out the door to the front entrance. We, we come out the door. Even workers at the rec center made sure to separate the coach from the referee, knowing the coach was still heated. 
Rowe's friend and fellow referee Perry Woodward stood by to make sure his co-worker was going to get out of the parking lot safely. Rowe says that coach and his wife continued to escalate the conflict. Walking in between the Doolittle staff that separated us, and she lunges at me. As wife lunges at me, I throw my hand up, and I take a step back. Then just moments I got to stop right there. So from you can hear from this story, the wife initiated the violence. Now, again, this is allegedly, you know, I wasn't there. This is going off of the official's word, but allegedly the wife initiated it. I'm not going to take like this whole crazy fresh and fit podcast or Kevin Samuels or uh, mediocre tours and re- tutorials and reviews standpoint where like, you need to get your women in check and all that. I'm not going to go on that standpoint. That's that's neither here nor there. But it is very much understood. And I don't care what women want to say. Are there women out there that can handle their own, that can fight, that can whoop most, like an extreme athletic woman who's in a fighting physical prime because she beat the shit out of most average men? Absolutely. But let's just speak in generalities. Generally speaking, most women are beaten the shit out of most men. But yet this woman, the wife of this coach initiated the violence that really, that transmitted onto this guy to put him in the hospital who wasn't engaged in the fight at all. He was just trying to be the peacemaker. So let's think about that for a sec. Ladies, if you, if you see men getting into it, In my opinion, you guys should be the voice of reason. I can't tell you what to do. This is just my advice. You guys should be the voice of reason. You guys should be the calming factor. You should understand, like, this is my son. This is my husband. I don't want them dealing with uh, criminal repercussions. Let me step outside myself and let me calm both of them down. But in this story, in this instance, allegedly, she's the one that initiated the fight and the violence, which now most likely is going to affect this young man, this grown man, and this wife for the rest of their life. Let's keep going. Leader Rose says the target changed, and the coach and his son both ran towards Woodward and punched him in the face. Taking a swing at Perry, and I blink, and and they, they connect with him. They connect with Perry. I blink, and then I hear a loud thump. Woodward, a veteran referee of 20 years, even most recently unofficial at a state championship game, is still in the hospital with another surgery to go from his fall. Doctors say he's lucky to be alive. We have constant threats towards us all over town doing games. But to see this type of violence take place towards an official, it's hard for me to find a story where this much physical injury occurred to somebody who is actually here officiating a game for some kids. Christosik said violence toward referees around the country is on the rise. At the same time, they're having a harder time finding people to work as refs. The last couple of years, these these instances are increasing every year. Um, And and quite honestly, unless they stop, without officials, we're not going to have games. The officials say this has to be a lesson, that it's just a game. We got to stop that. We, everybody, we have to stop. And city officials confirm that one man, we know that was the father, was arrested, and two others, the mother and teenage son, were cited. However, Christosik said that officials are protected under a higher standard of a public official. So, we- so yeah, how crazy is that, right? Uh, you're going to a basketball game, and you end up leaving in handcuffs. And again, wife cited, kid cited, father incarcerated possibly, well, I shouldn't say possibly, probably going to face criminal charges, maybe do time at county. Obviously, it depends on your socioeconomic status and how severe they want to do things and the factor of COVID. They might not want to put so many people in jail for what they deem petty crimes, but that's still going to be on your record. And if you are a coach that actually is worth your salt and you care about your reputation, your reputation is tarnished. Is it really worth it? And that official was a 20-year vet, they said, and just did a state championship game. So I would like to think a 20-year vet is 
a pretty solid official. Um, doesn't mean that every 20 year vet is automatically a great official, but I'm just going off of what I would deduce from the information given. So let's talk about it. Let's l- let me give you my perspective and you obviously can leave comments. Tell me about, I, I, I'm in this Facebook group called AAU fans. There's lots of complaints about officials in there and vice versa. There's lots of complaints about parents. There's lots of complaints about coaches. And there's also a lot of positive as well. Like I know for a fact I put my podcast out there and I also um, showcase what my teams are doing well, show highlights. I really try to spread some positivity and give my opinion on some commentary out there as well. It's pretty crazy that we live in a basketball era where officials are being attacked at a more frequent level and to the point that we're running out of officials. And I encourage you people that want to make money in basketball, like being an official is the highest paying part-time job you ever have because you, because they always need you and you can make pretty much make your own schedule. And a lot of times, most of them will pay you anywhere from 20 bucks to like, 45 bucks, sometimes 60 bucks an hour, depending on the level, the, the sport, or not the sport, well, the sport matters too, but we're obviously keeping a realm of basketball, but the level, whether it be high school, collegially, uh, you know, a high level UA event, uh, Nike, YBL, AAU event, like, and obviously your rec leagues, your normal, you know, AAU tournaments, things like that. It's very hard to say, there's anything justifiable about that. There's very rare circumstances where I could say an official um, needs an act of violence. I can give you guys my own anecdotal experience where I had to walk away from a violent situation because a ref actually wanted to physically fight me. And at the time, there was a bunch of YBA teams around. We were in Soldier Town in Oakland. Uh, and it just, and, and I'm the, co-director of YBA so it obviously doesn't look good there's more ramifications if I get into that and that I'm going to deal with than most likely that official and what was crazy was the official wanted to fight me because I wouldn't let him put his hands on one of my 13 year old kids um at the time it was Jaden Hurtado one of my kids we were playing the Oakland Rebels um the official got a lot of calls wrong uh definitely a lot of calls wrong uh, for one, he uh, when when you take the ball out on a dead ball play, not when it's uh, after you're scored, you they there's this misconception that you're not allowed to move your feet whatsoever. Like you have to stand still like a statue. Well, that's actually not true. If you look at the NFHS handbook, this is just a tip for some of you guys who are interested. You can actually step a couple of feet behind the line so you have space to pass, and you can move three feet to the left or right your feet do not have to stay stationary um you can't move across court but you can move at an angle to try to get the pass in this official kept saying it and kept calling the turnover when literally my kid would just adjust his feet to pass the ball he he was under the belief that you literally can't move your feet like you're in cement and i told him that's wrong and I showed him and he got offended, obviously, because I, for me, I keep the NFHS handbook on my cell phone and it's, you know, all, over 1700 pages. But you can look at it through, through the Kindle app and things like that. I, I always update it every year and keep it through my phone. So if any official wants to battle me on actual rules, we can do that. Um, with all that being said, basically, the game ended, got a little heated. Uh, they won a couple of the Oakland Rebels kids came over to my kid trying to pick a fight and they were pushing him. And the official didn't grab the kids that were actually attacking mine. He went and grabbed my kid and started manhandling him. He started manhandling Jaden. And so I said, Hey man, you know, so I grabbed him and said, Hey, you can't put your hands on a kid like that. He's 13. He's underage. His parents are right there. Like you can't physically assault this kid like this. Cause he was manhandling him. So then he rips his hands away from me. And again, I'm just holding his wrist and and putting my hand on his uh, uh, like chest and shoulders. Just like, hey, man, chill out, relax. 
He then rips away from me and then proceeds to say, oh, let's go fight, bro. Oh, you put your hands on me. Look, we can go. We can go in the bathroom real quick and do our thing. And I'm like, what? This man wanted to go in the bathroom and fight like we were in prison. And so, of course, I'm making jokes. I'm like, dude, look, first off, I don't fight the elderly. Second off, um, how long you been out, bro? Because you free now. You know that, right? Like, you you know that, right? And so, either way, so, long story short, I walk away uh, and just say, screw it, wash it. I don't think I've seen that official since. And even if I did, ain't no beef, ain't no nothing against that dude. But uh, the fact that you wanted to put your hands on a child and you're mad because you can't physically assault a child, I think that says a lot about you, man. And um, I hope you work through that anger and, and you heal and you become a better person. That's all I can do. Um, we all make mistakes. And we all get better every day. But with something like this, coaches, parents, players, we have to do better than this. This pandemic of officials being attacked. I mean, I even saw in the AAU group that officials are talking about doing a walkout and not doing any officiating for the month of July for AAU. And everyone knows, especially on the high school side and collegiate side, how important July is. It's live period events. So I definitely suggest we don't, uh, we don't go that route either because these kids want to play basketball. These officials want to make money, and I think some of them like basketball. The final thing I'll say about this or that on the flip side of it is, yes, there are officials out there who don't care, who take things personal, who have vendettas. Uh, let's not pretend like they're not out there. There's officials that just want to collect their check. There's officials that uh, have a personal vendetta against you. I dealt with it last weekend. There's this official, this one brother, um, he, he definitely makes it personal. And, and I know for a fact, because I've heard this from other people that work the score clocks and other, uh, uh, not officials, uh, coaches and things like that. Refs in the, my area either love me or hate me. The high level officials, I would say the ones that do varsity, NCAA, JUCO, and they act, they like me a lot because, they know I'm going to actually challenge them and expect them to do their job at a high level. And they overall know that I can admit when I'm wrong, but they can also admit we're wrong and we have a great dialogue. It's the officials who are not used to actually having to be forced to know the rules and be challenged. They're the ones that have the problem with me the most. They're the ones that literally say I'm arrogant. I'm cocky. I always think I'm right. No, I actually don't. I've literally admitted numerous times like, oh, my bad. I got that wrong or oh, my mistake. You're right. But at the same time, I am going to hold you accountable to your job. So, for instance, if an RSBQ is not disturbed, and if you don't know what RSBQ is, please go look it up. And if an official doesn't know what the RSBQ is, you don't need to be an official. Um, if it's not disturbed or if it's not a way that you can convey to me how it was disturbed to where that is called a foul or not a foul if I'm advocating for one of my players, just because I'm asking you to explain it, and justify it through the course of the rule book should not be offensive to you. If anything, that you should take that on as a challenge. But of course, there's a lot of officials that feel some type of way. I present this to a challenge to any official in Sacramento because Ted's been on my show and other guy and other officials uh, have been on my show. Any ref that wants to sit down on this podcast and challenge me, play for play, call for call, knowledge for knowledge, you're more than welcome to. Let's get your perspective. Let's hear your side. Because, again, I don't think you guys really want to do that. I don't think you really want to sit down and be held accountable to a standard and be challenged on certain things and learn certain things because it's hard to admit that you might learn from a coach. Because the thing is, I'm receptive from learning from you. I know I am smart enough to know I don't know everything. And I'm always willing to learn and learn something new in this game. So I put that challenge out there for any of you guys that want to uh, check out, you know, what I do here, my side of things, and I'll check out your side of things. Also, also got to keep in mind uh, that basketball has become a very universal language. So with that being said, I want to mention my guy, uh, Adam Fowler from uh, Fouled Out Podcast. He is a sports commentator, much like myself. 
He also talks about uh, mainly the NBA. I obviously talk more about youth in the AAU side and different life politics and things like that, but he talks the NBA. I definitely suggest you go check out the Fouled Out podcast. I'll play a little bit of clip from his show, and then, you know, you guys take a listen for yourself, but links for him will be in the description as well. What is up, everybody? This is Adam from the Fouled Out Sports Podcast. And if you like takes like these, the Brooklyn Nets won the James Harden-Ben Simmons trade. They did. I think that we're going to look back at this trade two to three years from now and say that the Nets absolutely won this trade or these look quote me all the stats you want that still doesn't change the fact that Aaron Rodgers is Charmin soft so yeah check out the foul out podcast with my guy you know he's he's doing his thing just like me we're all trying to Make it in our little own niche here on YouTube and in the audio side of our podcast world. So hopefully this illuminates some things for you. I know this is a longer episode than usual, but, you know, with this official attacks going on, I think it needed to be addressed. And I'm just speaking on my side of it. You know, agree, disagree, love to hear your comments. Uh, Again, hit that subscribe, hit that like button and let me know what you think. With that being said, I would like to say thank you guys for listening and and checking me out. Thank you for checking out the YouTube. Appreciate you a lot. Uh, You know, just always trying to give some good commentary. Again, hit that like, subscribe, sign up for the Patreon, get some new exclusive content. If not, just keep ghost watching and learning. Everybody be safe out there, and I'm out.